Right, so there's the uh, the welding bung. There's the 4.9 LSU plugged into this loom. And there you go, of course, it's got the uh, little bracket uh, to mount it, but because of how slim lined it is, it, it's going to be a bit of a interesting way to mount it, as it's not going to fit in a normal gauge cup in the same way. Luckily, it comes with instructions because there's 400,000 wires. And there you go, you've got your basic um, switch 12 volt, it's a 5 amp fuse ground and then there's a bunch of other ones and of course here's some of the features of the thing um, it's basically got two buttons on it mode and select so you can scroll through um, so you can go through to a three digit readout a four digit readout if that's what you want uh, you can calibrate it you can take the sensor out and do a free air calibration but you don't have to uh, and of course you can read um, you can read AFRs or you can change it to lambda if you prefer and then oxygen percentage display and change AEM net can message ID I'm not sure what that's for exactly might be something to do with linking gauge to other gauges or back to the AEM ECU or whatever but hopefully I got time to to play with this and I'm um, just gonna put it on the ED not that I can drive it at the moment but at least I'll be able to uh, just give you a demonstration of how it works and just scroll through some of the, the settings and uh, I thought some of these wires would be for like headlight dimming and that sort of thing but I don't think I don't think they are okay there's the factory oxygen sensor and down there is the factory oxygen sensor mounting location so what I'm gonna do I'm going to Unplug the oxygen sensor from there, take out the bung from the stock manifold, put the O2 sensor back in the factory manifold so I can put my O2, my wideband, into here to give it a test. When I do mail in here and actually drive it, I'll wire it in properly with a uh, with a fuse in it and everything, but, uh, but it's never going to be a permanent thing in this car because unless I want to buy multiple widebands, I'm, I'm going to use it in the Datsun when that eventually happens and yeah. For now, I just want to give it a test, run through some of the functions, and uh, yeah, just give everybody a, a bit of a look as well as myself to see, you know, how how everything works, because I'm pretty keen to have a play with it. I've unplugged that son of a bitch. Alright, factory O2 looks like it's pretty black so I'm guessing it's running rich uh, now I'm just gonna check before I go any further that these actually do look like they got the same thread on them looks pretty good to me Okay, I just needed two hands for that so I didn't uh, uh, twist the cord up heaps. There you go, so the thread on the uh, Bosch 4.9 LSU is the same as as the factory, the factory Ford narrowband O2. What a pain in the ass that was. Um, it's in a pretty good spot and I got that. Uh, the, fibers from the insulation all through me again every time I go onto the bottom of this car no so the wide beams just plugged in there just plug in this son of a bitch there you go there's the center itself just plugged in comes to this clip this clip comes through to um, yeah yeah anyway, plugs into you one of them, I don't know, they're all tangled now. Then there's another one that comes out. The, out. the wire that comes back out of the gauge is the one that you run power to. And that's got your outputs and everything. All it needs is a negative, which is this one, and a positive. 
Which I'm fused here. Okay, um, I just got, uh, let's get my earth clipped on there. I've just used the, uh, the alligator clips from this, um, multimeter. And the power is just, again, clipped on with the multimeter. Uh, onto the back of the alternator there. Definitely uh, started out lean, but keep in mind this thing um, hasn't been started since yesterday, so it's dead cold, so expect it to run to run pretty rich when it first starts up, but it's already come way up to, um, yeah, over 16 to 1. Uh, of course, that's only at idle. I'm actually not 100% sure if um, if 16 to 1 at idle is okay, but um, it definitely is up there. But for now, see, obviously we're on the, um, the four digit readout. So three digit, select, done. There you go. I'd probably, uh, don't stall on me, you bitch. So I'd be leaving it on the uh, three digit readout probably. Anyway, let's, uh, we'll try Lambda. Uh, four digit. LA for Lambda. Oop, fuck. There you go. Uh, so we know on, um, I'll put a, I'll put a link to a video that, that tells you if you don't know much about wideband air fuel ratio gauges, which I didn't know a whole lot about them, I'll, uh, I'll link a video that, it's a short video by Real Street Performance that explains all, all the essential information you need to know about these and basically from that video, as well as the, um, the, the little booklet that came with this, it basically tells you it doesn't matter what fuel you're on, you know that, um, uh, that a 1.00 lambda is is the stoichiometric ratio for any fuel that you that you're running. So if you're on lambda, you know that the one is equivalent to 14.7 AFR. There you go. So what else have we got? Uh, four digit, and we go back to AFR. Select. Nope, that didn't work. There you go. Now, of course, I don't have anything connected to the turbo, so it's not like we're going to build any boost just sitting here on the lawn. But um, I'll give it a few revs just so we can see the values change. Obviously it's not the most accurate demonstration because we're not driving so I can't really show you uh, what it looks like on boost which is something that I'd really like to know but because of the yellow sticker and everything it's not like I can take it for a drive and just make sure that the tune's alright. Right, we'll go back to Lambda and have a look. Obviously you can see with the um, the lights up the top, you can still actually see, even when you're on Lambda, you can still see AFR. There you go, um, again, it's not going to be a, a permanent fixture in this car at any point. Um, 
I'd like to have it semi-portable, otherwise I'm going to have to buy a second one to run on the Datsun, but basically, um, if it was permanent in here, I just don't know where I'm going to mount it to keep it stealthy. Um, possibly because of how thin it is, I could um, have it set up in here. If I made a plate for the top and kind of, yeah, I don't know, mount it in there somehow. That'd be kind of cool, because you could pull it out. And yeah, maybe somehow have the air fuel gauge there. And then when you park up, shut the ashtray and no one can see anything. So there you go, um, that's a quick test of that. Anyway, I've, I've watched a lot of install videos of wide bands and um, maybe I'm just stupid, but they always kind of confuse me with the amount of wires that they have. But again, I think it's because you've got, you've got outputs that you can run to a factory ECU, you've got outputs that you can run to an aftermarket ECU that will take a wide band input, amongst other things. But none of the install videos that I've personally watched really demonstrated how simple it could be if you just want to run it by itself just to read the output. You're not wiring it into an aftermarket ECU or anything. It's it's literally two wires. Switch 12 volt and a ground. And then plug the sensor in. There you go. Hopefully one day I'll actually be able to give you a demonstration in a boosted car and, and see what it does on boost. <laughs>